Hey y'all, welcome to Lolly Gavin, the It's a Southern Thing chat show where we discuss all things Southern. Today, I wanted to talk about Southern media, or and most specifically movies. What makes a movie Southern? What stereotypes do you see in uh, Southern movies? So let's, let's dive in. You didn't do it this time. You, 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 you. Excuse me from the first time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll cut you in, we'll cut it in. Okay, so to start the discussion, I guess let's start with like the most basic part of it. Um, what's your favorite Southern movie? Or I guess, I mean, should we say like movies set in the South? Because I guess we can get, we can, we can dive more into it, but like. They're not the same thing. What makes yeah. a movie uh -huh. Southern? Let's just throw out, what are, when you think of a Southern, a southern movie, movie. like what is your, what like, is your go-to? There's obviously like, okay, you're gonna have Steel Magnolia. Forrest Gump. Mm -hmm. Forrest Sweet Home Gump. Alabama. Big Fish. Yes. Oh, brother, where art thou? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. Um, you said Forrest Gump? I said Forrest Gump. Yes. Fried Green Tomatoes. Mm. Deliverance. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. But yeah, so like, yeah, what does make a movie Southern? Does it have to be set in the South? Does it have to be created by a Southerner? Does it have to feature X really amount terrible of... Accents. Well, does it have to feature really terrible accents? I mean, let's go ahead and the go into the... no. It's always no. Well, okay. Oh. It doesn't have to. I feel like I have an unpopular opinion in this realm. <laughs> is that I, okay, there's a graph in my mind. <laughs> and the graph goes <laughs> on the, on the x-axis is how bad the southern accent is. Okay. Mm -hmm. On the y-axis is how campy the movie is. The more campy it is, or the more fantastical it is, the more I fully excuse a terrible southern accent. I feel like that's fair because obviously if something's meant to be really realistic and then you hear someone like and they open their mouth and just a, a farcical foghorn leghorn starts coming out then I feel like I'm being like made fun of and this movie's like playing down to me. No. And I don't appreciate that. I only I only feel like you're being made fun of if if the character is to make fun of the south. It's like a negative right. stereotype. If it's like, you know, like a Daniel Craig in, in Dives Out or whatever, like that's not making fun of the South. That's just okay. fun. Like okay. if, I yeah. only think it's like insulting if the character itself is insulting. Right. Well, see, I'm going to take that a step further. I think it's insulting when it distracts from the movie itself. Because like in Nicolas Cage in Con Air, <laughs> I like I... I, to this day, can't tell you what the movie is about. I do about not know what the plot of that movie because is. Because I'm so focused on his, like, just trash Southern accent. He's like, it's so bad that you have to practice to, like, recreate it. Yeah. I know. The I tried. title does tell you. It's a bunch of cons, and they're in the, the air. air. Yeah. Like, I, like, that's it. Even that's, in, like, that's the whole movie. We, we might pick up on this later, but that movie, like, <laughs> gets on my last nerve. But, yeah, I mean, and I will defend Daniel Craig in Knives Out as Benoit Blanc for the rest of my days. I think it's a brilliant character choice to have him <laughs> be this old Southern queen. I love it so much. I think it's so much fun. And yeah, the accent's terrible. Of course, and in the new movie, you know, Janelle Monet also had a Southern accent that also wasn't great. Yeah, mm. she, yeah. Okay, that, well, spoilers that, don't. <laughs> she wasn't. That one. That one stuck out to me just because, like, even though like Daniel Craig through the whole movie is yeah. doing his thing, which I'm used to, and then she's like, "I'm from Alabama," and I'm like, "Oh." <laughs> Suddenly, I'm taken out of it. Suddenly, I'm, I think it was still a brilliant performance. Um, but yeah, but like, could I consider *Knives Out* or *Glass Onion* a southern movie because the main character is southern? See, that's, that's, Even though neither of them take place in the South at all. That's what I was going to ask. Is like, do we usually can, like we just listed a bunch of Southern movies, but all of them take place in the South? At least part. Like Forrest Gump takes place everywhere. I was going to say. I was like, Forrest Gump. He's all throughout he, the world. He's a jet setter. Like, <laughs> but he's Southern. Yeah. He's meant to. Be. And he. That, a lot of it takes place in Alabama, like rural Alabama and yeah. Rainbow, Alabama, which isn't a real place. I think for me, it does need to be set in the South to be a Southern movie because otherwise, it's just Southern people in a movie that doesn't necessarily mean like it's a southern movie just for like I wouldn't say I'm granted I haven't seen it but like if someone said oh Knives Out is a southern movie I'd be like why and if they were like because Daniel Craig has a southern accent I'd be like okay yeah I think I think in order for it to be a southern movie the south has to be a character oh. Oh. I, 
I, I like that. Okay, that was okay. a good answer. I like it. Literally suck at sex in the city. Yeah, we know New York's a character, but how about our entire region? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I really like that though, that, but like no, using the South that, as a character. Yeah, it, the South has to play a role in the movie you're yeah. watching. Yes, it's integral to the plot. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Or okay. the tone, or the feel, or like it's 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 like just lending something in addition to like this is the character, this is what they're doing. Yeah. I really like that. Okay. We did it. We we solved the problem. No, no, no. We're, uh, there's still. Well, thank problems you for joining there. us for this episode of <laughs> Credits Roll. Um, <laughs> now that said, like we we listed a bunch of movies that kind of orbit the same feel or tone, like, you know, Our Brother Where Thou is kind of a specific yeah. version of the South. Is there any? We're farcical, yeah. <laughs> do we have, do we know of any, like, Southern movies that aren't, like, necessarily, like, surface level, stereotypical, like? Silence for the next 30 minutes. Yes, let's say. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> well, I mean, I think about, you know, like, there are some rural elements to it, but, like, Big Fish is one of my favorite movies of all time, period. And you think about, and I feel like it brings, like it definitely has the like, you know, the big old house, the like field of flowers, like it has those elements, but it's also got this like fantasy element that I feel like, it's like this um, like magical realism type stuff where you're, you know, you're kind of adding the fantasy elements into the reality of everything. And I feel like it brought kind of a different, even though there are, parts that take place in like rural areas it's it's so much more than that <laughs> are we boring you <laughs> he, was, he, was like, not, he was not impressed with your point i mean okay. orange shut it down Sorry. he was like no that's fine a next he's, he's a paid funny. actor <laughs> but yeah it's interesting that like you know we have our you know southern actors reese witherspoon octavia spencer um, Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton, <laughs> famous, southern yes, the yeah. southern actress, singer, whatever. What were you going to say? What were you going to say? I just, I think it's like, I, this is nothing negative against Reese Witherspoon. I think it's very interesting. People, like, especially now, and when you see her in interviews, the accent is really there. But if you go back and you're watching some of her older stuff, it's really not, it's, it's very funny to me that she has become this huge thing of like Southern actress, Southern personality, when that was not at all, orange, he's been bad. So Reese has really developed this personality for herself where we're like, she's a Southern actress and that's like our thing. But if you go back, you know, I grew up watching like Legally Blonde and Cruel Intentions and all this thing and going back and seeing old interviews of, with her and the accent is not there. Well, and I also wonder if she was, I mean, we've talked about, you know, like, the accent kind of being trained out of us like yeah. especially like in the early 2000s when she was really like having a moment in culture and I she's doing she... all these huge blockbusters i'm wondering if it was like did she feel made, like she had to like a little it. bit of shame yeah. around an accent or connecting to a southern culture which she has now like embraced as she's become like older and you know more wise or whatever and now but, like, as a young mm -hmm. actress it's like i'm just trying to work and now she's fully established, and she's like, I can do whatever I want. Yeah. And guess what? I'm not hiding it anymore. Yeah. So I, I wonder if that's, like, part of it. Interesting. I feel like you take that, and then you take someone like Matthew McConaughey. Who has made a career Ooh. out of his voice. It, yeah. it, like, his whole personality is talking like me. And I'm like, Matt, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, come on, you got, you're making this look bad, dude. <laughs> but I'm like Larry the Cable Guy, too. Yeah. You know, like, you know, talk about someone who really turns it on. Yeah. Say, wait, right, he, well, he, yeah, man, he's not even from. He's not from the south. He's yeah. not even a cable guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, when you told me that, and I had no clue, like, and then I did. I watched an interview with him where he was just talking normal. He was just being Lariford. Lariford. Whatever. He's not Larry the cable guy. He was just Larith. And <laughs> I was watching an interview, and I was like. Where is yeah. it? I mean, it's fully just a character. Is it, do you think it'll ever be possible to have Southern characters in movies and TV that aren't so obvious? Like they don't have I'm Southern on their shirt Basically. and in the cue yeah. card behind them. Yeah. Like maybe they just have a hint of an accent and no one ever talks about, oh, where are you from? That's it doesn't it. have to be a plot point. That's just who they are. That would be nice. Yeah. Well, I think it's also like interesting to talk about like, we, you know, we're talking about, you know, big Hollywood movies, the things like directed by Tim Burton and like these, these people that are not from here. And so it's like, 
how authentic can the story be? Yeah. Like, and I, and I think people can write stories about people that are different than them. Like, I don't think that's a problem, but it's like, but at some point you're going to have to get to, you know, a point where you're like, okay, I need a consultant on this because I don't have this lived experience. Yeah. And so, and that applies to, you know, lots of other things, obviously, not just, you know, like regions you're from or whatever. Yeah, it would be interesting to look in the credits and see if there actually was sort of a regional consultant, even on Forrest Gump, mm -hmm. um, you know, which which is full of the South and, uh, yeah, Big Fish, Tim Burton, like, did, surely they must, and like, they, but they're also based on, like, books that were yeah. written. Written by, by Southerners, Southerners, yeah. yeah. Which is really interesting to think about because you do when you have a movie about almost any subject you have consultants mm -hmm. but when you do a movie set in the south do they ever actually pull in a consultant right. or they're like we'll just make it up no one cares yeah, just turn up the we'll accents know. we'll know yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. put some dirt on the shirt and put him in waffle house he's southern da -da. banjo music <laughs> yeah and i feel like you know we have a lot we have a pretty thriving film community here in birmingham and you know people that are making you know indies and stuff that are set in alabama or just the south in general where um, where they are, you know, written and created by Southerners. And so it is an authentic story because it's being created by these people. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't see a lot of that in like the mainstream kind of blockbuster type movie. Well, it's, I guess it's like the quickest way to a, to a destination, right? Like if you don't want the audience to have to do a lot of mental gymnastics to put the right. pieces together it's like we gotta we gotta establish right away that this character is southern mm -hmm. what do we do turn up the accent put on you know overall trucker hat <laughs> yeah trucker hat. he has a shrine of nick saban yeah. and then, <laughs> that is absolutely the intro to beautiful creatures I know I mentioned it before, but it's because it was so funny because i watched like we watched it with the kids somewhat recently and it was funny because it starts with just like you just hear his voice over and the second he starts talking my kids started laughing and they were like what is this movie you said it was about like witches and i was like yeah but it's set in the sound <laughs> so but like the moment he starts he's like i always had this dream about a girl that i was in love with but i'd never met and i was like oh my like, god surely they feel silly Right. Yeah. I mean, well, and well, it, like, comes, do they? it comes and goes too. Everyone's accent in the movie. Sometimes yeah. it's there, sometimes it's well, not. That's, which and that's, that's, that's thing real about though. like sorry to bring back Benoit Blanc, but that accent <laughs> is consistent. <laughs> it's awful, but it is consistent, and at so least. I will give him his props. Like at least you know he made a commitment to the accent, <laughs> and he's not going to stray from it. It's James Bond fully in disguise. <laughs> Oh, okay, you know deep, deep undercover. Yeah. <laughs> that goes along with Forrest Gump, though. Sorry, if we're still talking about accents, because I know a lot of people were like, ooh, the Forrest, why did he choose to speak that way? And then he actually did an amazing interview about it. And it was on, I think it was Graham Norton, which is, in my opinion, um, the second best chat show in the world after this one. And yeah, yep. And so Tom Hanks was talking about how he was like, he wasn't really sure. He hadn't quite solidified what it was going to be. I think he'd been speaking with the director and like, you know, they were like, how can we honor this character and not make him, you know, a comedic character mm -hmm. just by who, just by nature. And he met with this little boy and they, you know, they'd cast the young forest and he was just this kid from, I forget, he might've been from Alabama or Mississippi. Mm -hmm. He was just, kid that he met and Tom sat down to speak with him and that little boy started speaking and that is his voice hmm. that is exactly how he speaks and Tom said no I'll just, I'll I said <laughs> I'm this kid this I'm gonna grow up and he was like I'm I'm we're not gonna change the way that this kid speaks mm -hmm. we're not gonna do that I'm that's what I'm gonna do so what did Sally Field do <sighs> no no, well, like, and that's what I'm saying is that would be that would be great if that was like how it normally happens, but like you're not gonna sit here and tell me like Keanu Reeves, Nicolas Cage, <laughs> and Jessica Simpson took the time and effort to like sit with a certain person, and then they hop into their little studio. Is she from Kentucky? 
Yeah, Jessica Simpson's from South. Jessica Simpson's from Kentucky with that Dukes of Hazzard accent. The Dukes of Hazzard accent was obviously put on. But like, okay, come well, that's on. not the worst part of that movie, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, none of no them. No one's going to watch Dukes of Hazzards and be like, you know what the worst part of that movie was? <laughs> there are some people. <laughs> <laughs> she did not do it. We just do that in a video. <laughs> yeah. I like how we all threw out Southern movies and no one said that one, though. Yeah. That, or, um, uh, just now come up for Smokey's Bandit. Oh, Smoking the Bandit. All yeah. dads love Smoking the Bandit. All dads love Smoking that the Bandit. That is canon. <laughs> if you're a dad, you love Smoking the Bandit. <laughs> We're about to be. I feel it coming. <laughs> I, I see it coming. It's right here. It's slowly moving oh, no. up. <laughs> I like it. Tom Selleck. No, it's uh, Burt Reynolds, right? They both yeah. have mustaches. Yeah, Burt Reynolds. <laughs> and I love a good Southern character that, like, it's not like a big deal is made out of it. They're just, they're Southern... They're doing other things, but like sometimes it comes out in like their personalities. Mm -hmm. Sandy Cheeks from SpongeBob. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that I, is I agree. a perfect. I, I agree. Example. I agree, one hundred percent. I was in your mind. I knew what you were gonna say. <laughs> I just that, was <laughs> that was it. Sandy Cheeks. The Sandy Cheeks from SpongeBob. The essential Southern character. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> um, Video over. Genuinely great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> like I want to see more of that. I want to see more of just like yeah, this character is from the South. And sure, like it influences how they handle situations, mm -hmm. but we're not like, hey, look at this, look at this alien. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like, I mean, it's the thing, like going back to the, the, the Sweet Home Alabama of it all, her, I mean, and maybe it was sort of a reflection of like race herself, but like. I haven't seen it. What? I still haven't Tell seen it. it. Um, how dare you? I've seen, I haven't seen it either. What? <laughs> Guys. Guys. Watch party? After Guys, this? actually, I have. After I'm just kidding. Video? After the video? Did we you watch haven't it? seen it? Either? No, I was just joking. I've seen it. Of course. Okay, that was my okay, mom's right. favorite movie for like two summers. I've only seen one movie. But anyway, so oh, I, I guess like in, in a way that like doesn't do this great where like when they find out, like when her like New York friends are finding out like that she's Southern or that she's from Alabama, it's, I mean, it turns into the like, ha 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 ha, yeah. you sound so dumb. It, it, it reverts, it never fails. And that's why I'm like, do we really have to go that route with every time the South is mentioned? Yeah. Can't they just be a character who just so happens to be Southern? So we've talked a lot about accents um, and we can we can move on from that because I think there's there's a lot uh, left to be desired. <laughs> yes, <laughs> accents do better. In, in movies. <laughs> um, but I wanna talk about a little bit, like, do you think that there are any movies or TV shows or anything that has done a, a decent job at depicting the South as a character, as a setting? Um, the Walking Dead. The Walking Dead, yeah. <laughs> they, they really sold how hot it was. Yeah. Everyone was so sweaty all the time. Even the zombies. Even the zombies, Even the zombies, zombies were, were sweaty. Like, and you know what, if there were gonna be a zombie apocalypse in this humid weather, yeah, they'd be sweating. So yeah. I was like- And they'd be moving that slow. And that's real. Um, I feel like a lot of people will probably say no, it's a comical stereotype, but look, I know I know everybody in Steel Magnolias. I've met all oh, those yeah. people. Yeah. I've met them all. I went to church with them. I grew up with those ladies. And I feel like the people who are like, oh, uh, well, isn't that a stereotype of the South? I'm like, yeah, but sometimes stereotypes come from somewhere. Like, we know <laughs> those ladies. Yeah. Like, well, I think of the difference between that and maybe... Something like Dukes of Hazard or Smoking the Bandit, where like it's really put upon. I think Still Magnolias also comes. It comes from a place of truth, mm -hmm. and it comes from a place of authenticity. Where like, yeah, sometimes the stereotypes are true because the stereotypes come from somewhere. But it's also like they're played with such like grace and love for these characters that I think that's where the difference comes in. Mm. Um, and I think you're right. It's that fine line of when they take that away and then like make it a cartoonish like a cartoonish like punchline yeah and we even said it in sweet home alabama when like the second they found out she was like southern it, it, it like reverted right back to that low bar mm -hmm. low bar low bar like humor of yeah just ha 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 you're so country and ha ha yeah. ha you like bacon you like to save your bacon grease oh wow knee yeah slapper. well it's like it's all of these jokes are so like I think that's what like pisses me off is like all the jokes are so overplayed. Yeah. Like they have been done over and over and over again. And it's like, write something new, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's also that like with Steel Magnolias, you identify with these characters because you know these people because they have depth. They have, right. they have like, yeah. ac they're actual like people. 
when you have, you know, like a very stereotypical Southern person that's meant to be a butt of the joke, I don't know anybody like that. Like, right. Because I'm, right. I live here and I know that people are people and they have layers to them and they're not just like, you know, one trait. So like, it's like when I can't connect with the Southern character other than the fact like, oh, they're Southern and we're supposed to laugh at them, then it's a problem. Right. What was his name? David Spade's character. Joe Dirt. Joe Dirt. <laughs> yeah, like I was gonna say Toe Mater. It's a Mater from Cars. Oh yeah, like Mater from Cars. He, he's just like it's Larry the Cable Guy who we've Don't learned wrong. is not Southern. I do love Mater, but yeah, the whole joke is he's he's dumb. And he's from a dumb the tow south. truck with an accent, and that's from the south. Yeah, I mean also it's a cartoon. Isn't but also there are, there are Southerners that like Larry the Cable Guy. They're yeah, like, yeah. If you like yeah. get her done, yeah. they'll wear shirts with that on there. Yeah. Or hats or whatever. I've never seen them. You might be a redneck if you. Yeah, That's and that Jeff was Foxworthy. Jeff Foxworthy. Jeff yeah. Foxworthy. That was like when he blew up. That was like super relatable and like you yeah, know, like yeah. people were identifying with that. And then of course, like it didn't get any deeper. Yeah. It was like, oh, I have to keep doing this, and they're kind of the same jokes. Mm -hmm. That sounds familiar. We might have to cut out this next section <laughs> <laughs> completely. But I did want to talk about our own content. Yeah. And like. That's talking. A good segue. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to talk about our own content because we are Southerners making Southern specific content. And sometimes I think we, because of the nature of the internet and relatability, um, that we can sometimes get stuck in some of the stereotypes that we might have created for ourselves. Oh, yeah. Um, and I think. You know, where sometimes, like, our stuff might seem a little surface level. Yeah, well, I mean, again, it's like, you know, Jeff Foxworthy. You might be a redneck if you mow your lawn and find a car. Hey, yeah, and that's funny because, I've, you know, I've seen people with tall grass, whatever. <laughs> but then There like, are people with tall grass. But then, like, you know, like, it, it's, if, if that's all you got, and, like, again, like we, we talk about you might be a redneck, gets kind of played out. And it's, it's when you try to find that lowest common denominator mm -hmm. of like what what is relatable to a large group of people that in reality have like diverse characteristics and diverse personalities then you're you're left with just like two or three things right you've got like a handful of like things that everybody can identify with that have to be surface level mm -hmm. or else you're like getting too sp specific mm -hmm. or like you're not like on the nose enough with your like, you gotta hit him over the head with what this is mm -hmm. right away. Like that whole concept of having a Southern character. Well, we got another Southern in the first two seconds. Right. So they're gonna be like, hey y'all, what's up? And then that's it. <laughs> uh, that's my Southern accent, by the way. <laughs> really, that's it, it, it really comes out. It comes out, out so, sometimes. And I, I do think that's, that's the trap that we fall in with you know trying to find relatable humor to a region. Mm -hmm. Is yeah. that we're trying an extremely diverse region. It's extremely diverse region, and so you know, eventually, we're just southern people making comedy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like when when do we reach the point when we're just like the fact that it is southern people making comedy is enough. Is the thing. Right. right. Yeah. We'll That's like why it. it's a southern thing because we're southern people and, we're and now things. we're just yep. <laughs> It's a, it's a thing. And that's the tagline. Yeah. <laughs> when y'all talk about the subject, like all I think about is some of those comments that I see where they're, they'll always start off the same. I'm from the South. I've lived in the South all my life and I've never seen this. And I'm like, well, just because you specifically haven't seen it doesn't mean you're not yeah. the main region. Cause we might be talking to a certain region. Like, you know, someone who lives in Florida is not gonna have the same experience, Mardi Gras experience as someone from Mississippi or New Orleans or Mobile, Alabama. It's all very different. So like when we make some of these like sudden jokes that go a little deeper, we're actually also going like zooming in on the map to like a specific region. And I think that's what I struggle with is, you know, instead of like accepting that and like wanting to learn more and just being like, hey, you know, the South is a big region. We're met with a, oh, just because it doesn't happen to me personally, it's not Southern. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That is not how the South works. <laughs> it's a big old club. We can all be members. Yeah. It's fine. But I also think we don't it's, have to be it's the same. important to like, I think the authenticity of stories is more important, of course, than like the relatability, because I find that I can find something relatable even if a story is not about 
me. Yeah. Like, I, I think what we want to do here on this channel going forward is be able to tell some more authentic stories. They'll still be funny. They'll still be comedy. They still will have a, you know, an element of relatability. But I think it's like, let's try to... Less pigeonholed. Yeah. Let's, because let's there are so it. many yeah. stories that I myself want to tell about the South and jokes I want to make about the South yeah. that, like, might take a little extra, like, digging. Well, and I think, to your point, if you ever want to see us get out of this very surface-level comedy, you're going to have to meet us halfway. And, like, take yourself out of your personal, like, position on how you were raised and how you live in the South, wherever region you're from, and say, you know, this person has a perspective of the South that I have no idea of. And then you might find that you have more in common with that region than you ever realize. Maybe we're funny and educational. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Maybe we can be funny now and educational. Now we're a school channel. There's, right. always that, there's always that thing you, you fight against. And I, I do this when I just go to other places in the country. When somebody finds out that I'm from the South, I find that I have to lean into it a little bit. Like I find mm, I find myself yeah. being a little bit more folksy and like trying to be that like, you know, character. And and sometimes I feel like we do we try, you know we we kind of do that with our with our creations, mm -hmm. our videos and things like that. Like sometimes we feel like we have to look at it from an outsider's perspective and like oh gosh we kind of have to lean into that like. Yeah. What that expectation of what the South is, and you, surely there's a place for that, but um, again, it it is the surface level because because there's a, such a variety of experiences right. here, and a variety yeah. of people yeah. that like you can't. And it's like, is that like, do we talk about like, do are we perpetuating stereotypes in the nature of what we do? Yeah, are we part of? Are we part of the problem? Sometimes it's, I feel like it's a little blurry with what we do because some of our stuff we're quite obviously playing like a character. And then sometimes we are inadvertently maybe playing a version of ourselves. Mm -hmm. But if that isn't explicitly stated beforehand, we're like, okay, am I making fun of myself here? Mm -hmm. Or is this really who I am? Or are people going to watch this and think this is actually me? Am I, do they think I'm playing me or do they think I'm playing a character? Mm -hmm. And I think with a lot of the jokes we make, that line is blurred. And so... That's true for a lot of different kinds of comedy, too. Like, if you look at other people who kind of find these niches on, on, on the internet, internet comedy, couples comedy, for example, it's like a huge mm -hmm. thing where, like, you have this couple and we don't, we don't know what they are when the cameras aren't rolling. But when the cameras are rolling, it kind of falls into stereotypes of right. the guy being kind of dumb and, the, you know, the wife being like, oh, you gotta do this, you know, and we've done a lot of that ourselves. <laughs> um, We're but, gonna try Kevin, to stop. Yeah. Kevin, <laughs> Kevin's super dumb and Diane is just mean. But, uh, it's fine. But, but you see people falling into that and maybe they, maybe they are, maybe that is the relationship, but there, there's this expectations of the way that like, you know, old married couples that didn't just get married like two weeks ago, should act and like mm -hmm. and and that becomes the comedy and it's relatable for a reason but then it's also like surface level yeah uh, in terms of like relationships and how couples interact and that sort of stuff um i wonder if that also plays into how we're received because when people come in from the south or they're like we have transplants i've always noticed that there's this like force like one they like kind of force the accent on themselves a little bit mm -hmm. like and to give you an example like when brian kelly came to LSU and like his first like, you know, conference is him like shoehorning this terrible Southern accent in like a crowd of like parents, family members, college students. And everybody's like, where did this very bad Southern accent come from? But I wonder if like, there's also like an opposite side of like people that like move out of here from like out of state or like people from New York who retire in Florida, like feel like they have to play this role now that they're here yeah and the same is true for i mean we talk about we talk a lot about like country southern but you can see the same thing happening with like cajun southern or new orleans southern yeah. like you look at the water boy for example it's like you know like i don't you know i haven't done like a survey down in new orleans or like louisiana about like how people feel about the water boy but i'm We're sure it's friends. the same way when we, <laughs> when we like talk about like stereotypical southern country redneck humor that seems to be prevalent like i'm sure it's the same thing there's like these stereotypes that that 
cater to the outsider. Mm -hmm. It was like, yeah, that's, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, like um, with that, um, everybody thinks people from New Orleans or like any part of Louisiana are like living in the swamp. They're Cajun. They're wearing overalls and um, they're straw drunk. hat with a bite taken out of it. Yeah. Oh, one hundred percent. And then they're drunk all the time. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> it's so good. Or you're a vampire. Yeah. Or, or you're a vampire, and yeah. like you know, of course we are all of those things. But still, yeah. like we don't want Obviously. you to make fun of it. Yeah. No, see, once again, it's yeah. the ownership. You're not like, part it's of okay it. when we you do it. You can't make fun yeah. of it. That's um, our thing. But yeah, I'm, I'm curious, I guess, like, from us as creators in this space and also, like, maybe leaders in this space as well, at least on the internet, maybe. But, like, you know, I think I get bogged down in thinking about, like, the comedy of it all versus, like, a gritty, realistic drama. Yeah. Because I feel like there are some like films or TV shows that are dramas that I feel like maybe do a better job depicting the South or whatever. Yeah, you don't but have like to be most of the comedies I feel are very general surface level. Yeah. And and I think us being in the space and in the comedy space is we're in an interesting position where we're like, okay, well then how do we maybe turn the table on that how do we change that story how do we how do we begin to tell our authentic stories without losing the 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 levity and the lightheartedness of it all yeah comedy is generally broader right uh, and then drama is generally nuanced but i think you know now you see a lot of comedies that have nuance and look like you know the, the days of the sitcom old school sitcom are over and i think we have we have the potential to tap into that type of storytelling where we're not we're not focusing on broad tropes we're focusing on characters who behave right. in funny ways and like because yeah. of how they interact with the world is funny right. and so i think that's where you find more of that genuine human experience is in like maybe i don't know i don't want to say longer form but more like more when you have more of an opportunity to create depth in characters which is difficult to do in sketch comedy it's very because difficult you to have to you fabulous. have to establish the character and the game immediately and then just go and it's and generally a one and done yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah it's a one and done thing unless you make it a series right like real church ladies the real church down. ladies <laughs> 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 those ladies will have character arcs this just is mark my words <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah I, I i just think i think we're in an interesting position here being kind of leaders in the Southern comedy space um, where we can kind of create mm. the culture for ourselves about what that means to do media about the South. Ew. I was about to say, I was like, that's like responsibility. responsibility. Oh. Yeah. In the same Adult breath though, like we also have people who watch our channel who expect those things. They expect right. like, yeah the southern the the, uh, the super southern the super like country like the sort of one very specific thing that maybe they identify yeah, with the granny's house brand right yeah. and so like you know when we stray from that we'll get negativity we'll say Absolutely. like this isn't southern this is you know or we'll say like this isn't southern this happens everywhere or this isn't southern or y'all aren't southern or whatever mm -hmm. because they are even people from the south are expecting that yeah not to like switch the conversation but like on a slightly lighter note, something you said, like we do have a lot of people from outside that we're kind of the Southern guideline for. Like we have a lot of fans in different parts of the country, um, like in Canada, like like we have a few like in India, but they like comment on our stuff and they're like, I've always been curious about American Southern culture. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your videos because like this like, is like so informative. Like I want to come visit the South, and, and for that, like, wait, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're like, whoa, 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 whoa. where are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> Don't go to Florida. Let's, let's, go. let's pump the brakes. Let's pump the brakes. Uh, let, let us help you. Um, but I do like, and we, we've said like, oh, it can be kind of like it can bog you down with like trying to find that niche. I do kind of feel a sense of pride in being able to offer that because we are doing a justice for the South that we just talked about isn't being met media wise. Right. Is like also, I mean, back to it, we're Southerners making Southern comedy. Yeah. So it's, you know, there is that ownership there. There is that, you know, kind of pride in ourselves, I guess, that we get to have. Yeah, yeah. and we're not doing it in New York or LA. We're right. Not, you yeah. know, like we're, we're doing it right here. Yeah, in and, Birmingham. And we're telling 
some like like we're not telling our stories as much depth as we would like to, but we're still kind of telling a version of our story. And there are a lot of people that live near us or that are around us that have very similar stories to that. And so I like I do think it's kind of cool that we can kind of spread that on a global level. So yeah, that was our discussion on Southern movies and media, and then it got kind of meta. And <laughs> <laughs> got real meta. <laughs> Listen, and that's okay. Did and you guys sign up for this? And if you're watching this on Facebook, it's now called Meta. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually and sponsored. that is extra meta that um, we're talking. thank you guys so much for watching um, we hope you enjoyed this discussion if you have your own two cents to add please do get, get in the comments um, tell us about like what your favorite southern movies are what you think they've done great what you think they've done badly um, and maybe what kind of stories and stuff you'd like to see from us also because as, as participants in this we also want to hear feedback on that um, so thanks so much for watching! Ah! This has been another Bye. educational episode. Subscribe. Bye. Yeah, subscribe. Yeah, subscribe to the button, hit the bell, comment. We'll have an end card. We'll have an end card. Do that stuff. <laughs> I'm helping. Hey, it's Ryan from It's a Sudden Thing. Click here to subscribe, click here to watch more videos, and click here to get Liz to take me to Six Flags. We're gonna be late. Come on. Yes. Come on. Thanks, guys. <laughs>